Hi, I'm Brock Bites, the guy who runs the internet. And unfortunately, my videos haven't been doing as well as I expected. So this week, I'm going to take my lunch and put it in a bucket of water. Just kidding. This week, we're going over power basics. And if you stick around, I'll even tell you why I didn't die. It's a necessity that I bring internet to the most inhospitable sites anywhere. To do that, I'll bring this device out. I'll jack up the antenna as high as I can. These devices are all very sensitive when it comes to power. In this video, we're going to go over how to get power, what the different types of power are, how they work, and the technical specifications of what you need to power these devices. So coming out of your wall, you go to a plug that's called a NEMA 515 that looks like this. Five means 120, 15 means 15 amps. Unfortunately, nothing you have that's electronic is going to work with that. So that's why you have all these hanging on your wall. These convert between AC and DC. And what's the difference between AC and DC? Instead of going up and down between 120 and negative 120 volts, these all change it so it's a linear flow of some DC voltage. Common DC voltages are 5, 12, 24, 48 volts. And that's what uh, these convert to. So here we have these two converters. This one is 24 volts and this one is 12 volts. This one does 800 milliamps and this does 1000 milliamps. Now the way to think of the difference between volts and amps are like an ocean. An ocean has waves and the size of the waves, think of that as the voltage. The amount of water going into it, that would be the current. Circuits are all built for the same voltage. You wanna make sure the voltage is the same. So this, if this is 12 volts, you want another 12 volt power supply. But the amps just need to be greater or equal then. The other thing to know about these things is none of these are really standard in DC world. These things are called barrel connectors. These barrel connectors can be any size and they can also do different things like tip can be positive, tip could be negative. Oftentimes you might even want to cut off the old tip if you know that one will work and put it onto the same wire. In the ISP world, we only use clean rectified power. That means that everything that we're going to do to comes out of, the, out of the electrical grid, goes into a device called a rectifier that converts it to uh, DC power. That DC leg is also going to go to batteries. We never want to pull off power from the grid because if you ever watch your lights, they're often flickering. If you see lights flickering or anything wrong, that means that the grid screwed up. So by using a rectifier, we're always able to pull uh, clean power. The opposite of that is like what you use in your car, an inverter. An inverter takes DC power and converts it back to AC. All batteries are DC, all wall outlets are AC. This is the power inside one of our network cabinets. Inside here it requires all 48 volts and all have to be clean. All telco really takes 48 volts. So in here we have this device, which takes uh, AC power in and then converts it to DC power while also holding a battery leg. That enables us to have batteries that are able to support it between four to eight hours should the power go out. Those batteries are included down here. This thing is a thing that is actually injecting the power to the radios on top. This is sending clean 48 volt DC power from the batteries up into this thing, and then this thing sends it up to the radios on top that the clients connect to. Typically when you buy a battery, they're made for 12 volts. The reason batteries are 12 volts or most cars are 12 volts, most electrical systems along with any motorcycles or scooters or everything runs on 12 volts out there. So how do we get to 48 volts, which ISP world needs? We got to wire them in either series or parallel. Series will allow you to multiply the voltage. You can take four 12 volt batteries and then you get 48 volts. Or if you have need redundancy, you could run two of those 48 volt strings together, then you have some redundancy so you have a battery fail. In this box, we have two batteries because everything in here is running actually at 48 volts or 24 volts. 
and you can see that the way that these are wired together allows you to hook up something like a switch and allow you to have redundancy should something fail. And the cool thing about this thing is it'll actually page me if it goes down. So hopefully we can resolve it before the batteries run out. So now that we know about uh, volts and amps, how do these correlate between each other? Well, if you multiply them together, they create a thing called watts. Watts is an equalizer between all of them. For instance, if you have 100 volts and you have three amps, you're using 300 watts. Now, if you change that to 50 volts and then you have six amps, you're still 300 watts. So everything that you're using in AC is being converted to heat. And watts is an indicator of how much heat you're using. Watts directly converts to a thing called BTUs. 12,000 BTUs is one ton. So if you have a one ton AC, that's 12,000 BTUs, which is approximately 3,500 watts. So if you want a quick addition, if you're using 100 volts and you're using 35 amps, you got 3,500 uh, watts of power that are being consumed. To cool that and not make it uncomfortable for you, you gotta offset that with one ton of cooling. Having good power and clean power is just as important as having good networking here. Without having clean power, you can't provide reliable services. And if you're wondering why I didn't die at the beginning of this video, it's because I wasn't grounded to anything. The electricity had nowhere to go except to that bucket. If, if I was standing on like a metal drain, it would have gone through the water, through my heart, and into the metal drain and into the earth. But because it was just isolated to that bucket, it had nowhere to go. I can still use my toaster even once it dries out.